What's good, YouTube fam? It's your boy Tony, aka the center of the chaos and controversy. And uh, well, here we go. So, yesterday I was watching a video that Brandon Tatum had posted, and the video within itself was decent. He he hit upon some legitimate points. What I disagreed with, here's what I'm saying. What I disagreed with because he got a lot of people who rally behind him that always hype him up and don't ever challenge him on some of the things or his point of views, which leads to entertaining an echo chamber, right? He's not challenged, okay? And forget the fact that if you ever disagree with him, he's going to have people that support him and diehard Tatum uh, fans and followers that they can't call him out on some of the nonsense that he entertains, okay? That's where the problem lies, okay? He goes on to say something to the effect of, like, the media don't cover certain things because they are promoting a one-sided narrative, propaganda, and agenda, this, that, and everything else. And I say, you know what? I don't disagree with you on that. However, Brandon Tatum, in the comment section, because I, 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 I responded under someone else's comment, because they said something to the, yeah, Brandon Tatum always um, tells the truth or whatever. I said, no, what he does is he cherry picks certain things to discuss and cover that fits his narrative that, that caters to his talking points. He doesn't talk about anything that's a challenge to him. There's a difference, okay? Um, one of the things that he does is he'll point out all the criminal activity in the black community, but conveniently dismiss and disregard and not touch base upon anything as far as like criminal uh, elements in the white community. He'll just paint a broad stroke of the brush and basically say that Danny, everybody in the black community until recently, then he has to retract what he says. Of course, I'm not talking about all blacks in the community. Like, like it should be understood. But how you present it gives, the, gives off the impression that you're speaking on every black individual in the black community when you go to highlight just the negative, only the negative, but don't talk anything positive about what goes on in the black community. Okay? That's where the problem lies. Now, someone got came to his defense and said, you know what? Oh, uh, he's a he's an officer and I'm pro police too. I said, here's the problem when it comes to people being pro something. Because just like he'll sit there and chop away at the core of somebody being pro-black saying, see, this is what I don't like about these pro-black organizations and these activists and this and this and that, is that they don't see uh, where, where, where they mess up because not every white person and not every da 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 Okay, well, with that being said, I agree. Not every white person is racist. Not every white person has this thing about them where they have this whole generalized outlook on the black community okay they don't no they're not the boogeyman but yet you'll be you'll be the first one to sit there and say there there are no races but you'll go to the democratic um arena and say there's some racist individuals over there well which is it is is there racism or is there not racism okay can you make your argument without inserting racism into the equation or making the argument against the Democratic Party okay um but pro anything like people that are so pro-white that believe that whites are are, 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 are so pure and the blacks are, are the, the the disgusting uh, uh, group of people that that plague this country but then when you get to know black people, you know that we are not the stereotypes that you throw at us or, or place upon us, right? Same thing with being pro-police, okay? I tell people, you know what? You could be pro-police. Because like I said, yeah, there are good officers out there. There are officers that do their job. There are officers that don't violate department policies, you know? Uh, they, they, they do their best to help out individuals in a time of need. But that does not exempt, exclude, uh, pamper, making excuses for the bad officers. Which, 
by the way, when he talks about uh, the media only covering a certain side of certain things, this is what I point. This this is what got got me to make this video right here. Just like I say, and I pointed and I've pointed it out because I had to come to this um, sense of awareness when it was brought to my attention. I said, "Hey, you know what? Everybody keeps saying that the police always or only uh, is a hindrance to the black community." I cover stories of how police officers unjustly killed implemented misconduct in the white community and I gave the examples of Hunter Britton, John Hurley um, Ryan Whitaker and others I made that point I said Brandon Tatum don't cover those stories, why not? I said but if it was an issue dealing with, with, with a black individual and an officer, he's all on it but when you bring something that's that's valid, as far as where police mess up in the white community, he don't say nothing. He's quiet. So I'm saying, yeah, and then they say, well, he could talk about whatever he wants to talk about. What kind of childish, half-assed response is that? Like, he could talk about whatever he wants. Shut the fuck up. Basically, what I was pointing out was validation on... If you're going to make this argument against someone else, then check yourself. Because you're just as guilty of doing the same fucking thing, brother. And it's funny because somebody says when, when, you, when you make a point and it has validation to it, people get upset. And I'm saying that why would you get upset if you're telling the truth? If somebody says something about me and I know it to be true, I would sit there and be like, damn, you're right. And I'll go back and try to fix it. You know, um, and acknowledge certain things. And people are like, well, it seems like you're always attacking Brandon Tatum on this, that, and everything else. You just like the mother people that are haters on him. Look, I, I said, I went from attacking Brandon Tatum to attacking his talking points. I've transitioned. I've grown from a certain aspect, okay? You don't hear me calling him any names anymore, do you? No, you don't, okay? So now I mature to the point where I attack the talking points, okay? And even that isn't good enough because still people want to sit there and find reason to boo-hoo and cry, okay? And it got so it got so ridiculous that I couldn't comment under the comment section under his um, his post anymore. But he's the first one to talk about censorship, right? <laughs> what you can and what you cannot say, right? You always got to agree with something. And that's what I said. That's the problem with his platform. He entertains the echo chamber. You, you can't argue against him because it's not accepted. People come under my comment section and argue with me all the time. And I personally respond. Anybody that follows me, even if someone says, Tony, I don't care too much for your channel, but I respect what you have to say. I respect your standpoint. And on top of that, they get responses from me. They don't really, you don't see too much of other people running to my aid, attacking people, defending me. No, I defend myself. I speak for myself. Okay? There's a difference, right? And I'm pretty sure he knows who I am by now. Okay? But. People say, well, you're always, you know, attacking him. I said, look, let me break break something down to you in the interest of fairness, okay? When Brandon Tatum goes to speak on the breakdown of the fatherless homes and he lays out the whole entire reasoning why, I agree with him. When he went to go talk about the Black Lives Matter organization, which I never supported from the jump. The movement, to a certain extent, yes. The organization, no. Because I don't bandwagon jump on shit like other people do. I take a, set, set, uh, a seat back. Um, um, I take a step back, should I say. And uh, I observe. And then when I start noticing, oh, this is propaganda. Oh, yep. This is uh, one of those opportunists uh, situations. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, I've seen this happen before. Yeah. I agree with them about the organization. 
Um, his current situation, oh, talking about Biden. I don't care for Biden. Didn't. Knew everything about Biden even during the Obama administration, which I was just like, why has Obama got this dude as a vice president? But then when I see, okay, for the same reason why he got Koala B. Harris for vice president. Okay. Right in there, I was just like, yep, this whole is bogus. Didn't care for Biden. Agreed with him on, on his take on Biden. When it came to the jab, his interpretation and what well, he said, hey, you need to uh, pay attention because some things ain't adding up with this whole situation with COVID. Agree with him on that. But there are certain things that I don't agree with him on. And I have a right to. Just like somebody had to say, well, he has a right to talk about whatever he wants to talk about. Shut the fuck up. Basically. Cause and, and then talking about, well, you know, I'm pro-police too. Like, that's going to get you brownie points or something like that. Okay, that's fine. That's your take. No, I never said you couldn't be pro-police. I couldn't say back to blue. But then when you point out some of the faults in the so-called narrative of back in the blue, oh, people get so offended. They get so butthurt. They get so triggered. They're so angry. But these people that are so pro-something be the first ones that want to cast stones. What what they say? Throw, uh, be the first one to want to throw a stone, hide the hand. Right? As long as you're pro-police, you're okay. But if you're pro-anything else, oh, you're a problem. Stop the madness. Stop. Um, like I said, I went from pretty much, oh, one more thing too that uh, I wanted to point out. Um, what, what, if you really want me to break down what I, what I don't like about his character, his characterization is, um, you would think that a person who came from the background that he has come from, where he wasn't doing so well, got arrested, disrespected his moms, this, that, and that, a troubled individual, decided to clean up his act, become an officer, right? The problem that I have with those type of people is that you become so self-righteous that there is zero empathy. There is zero, how should I say, um, compassion for anyone else that is walking the same path that you used to walk. You would think those are the people that you would focus on to try to help them out. But ironically, with those type of people, they run towards religion and try to clothe and cloak themselves in religion to say they are now sanctified. They are holier than art thou, right? They are better than, okay? And they'll use Jesus and God to, to, to give this false persona of who they are. Because if you were so much that, we can go back to that Zoom call when you said, you want to get hood, nigga? You want to get hood? You want to get hood? Threatening somebody on a Zoom call because you got all in your feelings, because you couldn't control yourself, right? That hoodness resurfaced. So, like many people said, was that the type of attitude that you brought to the job when you was an officer? When somebody got under your skin? Was you the type of person that condoned whooping somebody's ass? If they said something that you didn't agree with, did you pop them in the mouth? Did you blacken their eye? And these are legitimate questions because we are looking at the content of your character because you do this back and forth. I don't pretend to be better than anybody else. I don't pretend to be one that is without flaws. I don't put myself on a pedestal to think that I'm better than somebody else. What I do is try to help people. Why? Because I've been in situations that other people were in. I have an understanding about people. And I don't just step on a person's neck 
because I don't agree with, I don't know, how they are as far as like a group or a community goes, just to list somebody else, another group up and put them on a pedestal. I'm raising the bar evenly. If there's something I don't agree with in the black community, I'm going to address it, and then I'm going to try to present solutions. If there's something that I don't agree with in the white community, I'm going to address it and give my opinions and offer some kind of solutions. I'm raising the bar equally. I don't just put all the weight of negativity down just so, and that's what he does. Show me a video where he does equally uplift the black community, where he does and say things positive to ensure or encourage positivity in the black community versus holding another group up and this isn't me throwing stones at the white community no this is just showing you the characterization of brandon tatum and his rhetoric and what he's and how he presents things and his topics of discussion because like i said if i'm gonna give criticism i'm gonna criticize equally okay so with that being said, since I got that off my chest, and I wouldn't have been making this video if my comments wasn't censored, Mr. Oh, you know, they're, they're promoting censorship. But what are you doing? Case, and this is a very valid analogy and a prime example. Something that, that you don't like being said, you shut somebody down. But, oh, wasn't you butt hurt when uh, mm, you couldn't say certain things, Brandon, and you got shut down? Yeah, okay. Don't sit there and cry wolf and all of that. If you if you're if you're just as much as part of the problem, then you are of of the solution. Anyway. Pfft.